Hey YouTube, so we are at Anthracite Outdoor Adventure Area, and this is the Blue Guided Ride. Um, the park does monthly um, rides, and uh, Offroad Consulting is the one that actually does a ride. Um, however, it's the, the monthly park ride. Um, this is the, the Blue Level uh, group. Um, however, we just happen to be on a green because you have to do some greens to get to the blues. So this trail right here that we're on is 102. And uh, we are taking uh, 102 basically back um, to the office essentially to head over to the other side of the park. This is a green level trail. Um, I had somebody ask me one time like the differences between uh, like green, blue, and black and red. I use those colors sometimes, but uh, some people that are watching this, they don't really know the colors or whatever. The colors actually come from skiing. Um, very similar um, skiing of like green, blue, and black, which is like you know beginner, intermediate, advanced, and uh, it's like a rough kind of system. Like usually, like green is like if you have a number system in difficulty from like one to ten. Usually, green is like one, two, three, and like blue might be um, four, five, six, and then uh, black might be seven, eight, nine, and then you know red might be like ten. Um, so red is typically, you know, buggy only, and a, a jeep should not be capable of doing a red. Um, and if if it is something that isn't too difficult for a jeep to go over, then most likely the trail is miscategorized. That's a little point of view of um, mine. <laughs> um, a red should really, really, really um, be difficult, um, and it should not only be difficult for a jeep, but it should be um, something that is really intended just for for a buggy. Um, the blacks are the things that should be difficult for jeeps, um, and then um, the greens should be relatively easy. Um, th this is a green, obviously. You can see that there's very few obstacles. Now, the difference between like the green, the um, the blue, the black, and the red, for the most part, is going to be obstacle size, and it might be narrowness of the trail or off camberness of how much of an angle you're at and how likely you are to tip over. Um, there can be a lot of different kind of factors. That go into, into rating the trail um, on difficulty um, but typically it has to do with like size like um, if if the rocks are bigger then probably it's our trail if you're more uh, you know off camber it's probably you know a higher rank trail um, if the water's deeper or the mud's deeper it's probably a higher rank trail like that's that's the general thing so um, you know like if you're a beginner and uh, you know you're wanting to do a little bit of a more difficult trail and you're just trying to figure out you know what's the difference the difference is mainly just the, the size of the obstacles and, and such on this trail um, that we're currently on you can see that uh, we probably don't even need four-wheel drive um, we could we could do this in two-wheel drive honestly it's um, very flat uh, and it's almost like a gravel road um, but the question is you know what well, we're in you know two-wheel drive why, why or four-wheel drive why are we in four-wheel drive um, specifically on these gui gui guided rides, normally um, we get everybody to go into four low, and then we just stay in four low all day. We don't uh, um, swap, you know, which one we're in, like from four low to four high or whatever. Usually everybody airs down. Some people air down a lot. Um, so, you know, the faster you go um, and the more air down you are, the more likely you might like pop a bead or something like that if you, if you do hit a rock. So everybody just kind of goes the same because it's a consistent speed, and, uh, and that's what we do. So you saw there, like I went around the mud and everything. I'm being a little bit conservative uh, because we just came back from the shop. <laughs> like literally, we were sat sitting at a Jeep dealer for two hours, and they had, were just, um, you know, redoing like the the seal from all the like the oil blowback and stuff that we had in the vehicle. So I'm just uh, kind of being a little bit of ultra um, conservative with uh, trying not to go in, in any kind of water that's too deep or, or anything like that <laughs> to really just make sure that everything's like perfect because I don't want to like cause a problem and then think that like maybe the problem wasn't fixed. And you know, a little spoiler I guess, like the problem was fixed and we didn't have any kind of problems afterwards um, for the whole day and we actually, you know, drove home and we just other kinds of driving to other places like RV show and stuff that you'll see um, footage on and we, we didn't have any problems with the Jeep so um, that Jeep dealer did like a, a fantastic job. In the summertime you'll see footage of this place and there's a little bit of a ceiling and what I mean by that um, a ceiling is you can see above us the way the trees um, like wrap over where we are. It makes this like beautiful kind of green uh, um, lush um, path that we, we go down 
and uh, the trees actually like kind of like wrap around um, the trail making a little bit of a ceiling uh, but you can see right now in the winter time obviously you can just actually just see the branches um, and you can tell that it will do that um, so maybe I'll, if I have some footage or something like that of when we are on this trail earlier I'll link it in the corner so if you see a link up there you can click on it if you want to um, see the, the fancy uh, leaves and such So there are very deep pits, um, like you saw like right next to us, there was a deep pit. Um, this was a coal mining area. Um, a lot of this land up here um, is coal territory. So because of that, you have to be very careful around those um, sinkholes, pits and stuff like that. Um, you don't really want to mess around with them. So this is uh, um, coming up to the um, entrance to the west side. And uh, this is where the big Polaris sign is. And so normally, um, I like to, when I come to the west side, I like to go to this side of the park, um, on the west side. I, I find this side a lot more interesting. And uh, the other entrance, like if you go to the left and make like two lefts, like you'll see it over there near the gate. Like, or when you come in the gate, if you just go straight, that opens up to a big clearing. It's grassy, it's kind of boring to me. So I almost always um, come back this way, or go in the park um, that way. But like I was saying, like, like the, the half that we're leaving is a half that like, um, that's a little more hilly, and then if we continue going straight there, that's the side that's um, like flatter. So anyway, so that's a Polaris trail. That's a green trail. Um, I, some people were just kind of curious to see um, what a trail might look like if it wasn't like one of these like more difficult ones that we do. So there's one that's just kind of easier. So anyway, um, we will continue on with the series, and we will show you some more trails that we did at uh, AOA.